Hey guys, so, bit of a helpful video today actually, which is weird because I'm not normally helpful. But yeah, I had a request for a video from Webb asking if I could show how I've set up my helmets and my camera and everything. So pretty much motor vlog setup video, which you'll have guessed by the title probably. So right, let's get straight into this. So as some of you know, I've actually got three different helmets. That one that one and this one all right we'll start off with this one this is the first helmet i ever started motor vlogging with that's handy so yeah as you can see i've actually got two microphones in there this is just the bluetooth headset built into the helmet so pretend that isn't there it's this microphone here which i use for the camera which is, as you can see, I've actually poked a hole in the lining here, pushed it all the way through, poked another hole, and stuck it out the top. Now, I'm going to say that's not a good idea. Don't do that. Because then that keeps coming off. Because it keeps getting knocked, and pretty much every time I open and close the chin bit, it comes off. But you definitely need one of them on there to stop the wind noise. So don't do that. That's not clever. I'm not that clever. Also, as you can see, I've got the mount here. I've used the curved mount you get from Drift. You get three different types. You get the curved, the flat, and a goggle mount, which you can actually use. So like Velcro onto the side of your helmet there then it just means you don't have the mount on there all the time. You can take it off and you've just got a strip of Velcro. Let's pretend I didn't drop that. And you've just got a strip of Velcro along there, which you don't really notice. But then again, you don't really notice that. Also, if you do what I do, I've always got the camera on, so. It's going well so far. Uh. Give me a minute. Right, sorry about that. This isn't very professional, but it is helpful, and that's the important thing. So yeah, this time I've had to put the mount quite far back, because obviously it does that. Ideally, you want it here, but I can't do that, because as soon as I open it up, the camera would be pointing upwards. That's fairly pointless. And yes, I do ride it up, because it it is... P and J approved, which means you can lock it open so it won't come down. Felt I needed to put that in there because most flip-up helmets don't have this little switch there, which means it's actually illegal to ride it up. But yeah, that was the first helmet I started vlogging with. Very dodgy setup. It wasn't brilliant. So let's move on to something that's a bit better. By the way, if anyone's wondering, Kberg Duke. That's what the helmet is. Right, second helmet I ever started vlogging with, which is a lot lighter, because it isn't a flip-up. This is a Shoei XR1000, I always forget if it's the 1000 or the 1100, too many helmets. But yeah, as you can see I have actually put some stickers on it, just because I can, fuck it. But yeah, this is a bit of a better setup, because in there... You can't see the microphone, because it's inside the cheek bit. If you look around the back, you can't really see the cables on it either, because I've got the cables running inside, wrapped up inside the cheek pad. So it just comes out, runs down there, back up and out, and that actually holds it in place, which means you don't get a lot of movement in the cable, which means it's not flapping about, you don't have to keep adjusting it, you don't have it too long or too short, it's always exactly where you want it and I've actually put the mount a bit higher up on this one so you've got a bit of a different view because instead of it being quite far back because the further back it is helmet's curved so it's going to be pointing out that way ideally you want it straight forward or in a little it's a little bit further forward and a bit higher up as well because then you actually get the view coming just about halfway up where the visor <coughs> sits here. Now something I will say is in there, there is a microphone obviously, 
but it doesn't have the little the foam. I can't remember what it's called. Sorry, the cat. No, that's a dead cat. I don't have a dead cat. I've got a live cat. It's around here somewhere. Yeah. So this mic doesn't have that little foam cover on it to stop the wind noise because I assumed having it inside the lining would do the same thing. Kind of right. It's not bad. It's not brilliant. Thoroughly average. But again, it's the second time I set up, so it got better. Didn't get perfect. Also, as you can see, I've got the cable sat inside the little clip on the mount. Because then it means if I do end up taking the camera off at some point, or if it's just sat around, I don't have to have the wire dangling around. I can clip it in, and if that comes out with some force, I thought it came out a bit more force than that. But it doesn't really come out with a little bit of wiggling. You have to yank it. Now again, I've got the curved mount on there, because obviously it's a curved surface. If your helmet is like got a flat surface there, obviously use the flat surface mount because the curved one's going to do fuck all. Just in case you're wondering, it's really simple to sort this out. All you do is you unclip the cheek pad, push the wire in one of the holes, just keep pushing it, it'll wrap itself up. Well, it'll, it'll wrap itself up like that rather than like that. And then you get the wire coming out, you get it the right length, then you just click it back in place. And if needs be, you can use that as a microphone and just take the cheek pad out. Don't see why you'd do that. Use your phone like I do. Could be better though. I need an actual camera. So yeah, that's that helmet sorted. Third and final setup I've done is on my AGV AX8 Evo Naked. This helmet is obviously the lightest of all because it's AGV. It's nearly 300 quid for the helmet. Good thing about this helmet is it has this that which just goes down there gives you a bit more wind protection less wind noise it's quite good for audio now again on this one i've got the microphone inside there you can just see the bump this one does have the foam cover on it because actually there isn't much padding inside that cheek pad at the front because well your your chin's about here actually big gap there which is why i've use that because otherwise you get the wind coming straight up and hits you in the face and it's noisy so yeah and again i've put taken the cheek pad out pushed the cable into the cheek pad pulled out what i need and clipped it in the side now i think this is the best setup i've done because you've got a lot of wind protection in there with this on it even more wind protection it's not an overly noisy helmet except from 80 mile an hour upwards but i don't know that because in england the national speed limit is 70 and we're not allowed to go any higher than that so i've never done 80 in my life now again i've used the curved mount if you're putting it on a helmet you normally i've used the curved mount or the goggle mount to just velcro on simple the flat mount is mainly just for surfaces on the bike which is what i use it for now the mount's actually in a bit of a lower position on this one, but that's just because there's that thing there, which made it quite difficult to get that in the ideal place. Because again, you'd want it kind of, you'd want it up level with that bit there. But this works per well, pretty well, as you can probably tell from some of my videos, if you've seen any. If you haven't seen any of my videos and you're just here for this one, check out some of my others. They're, they're all right. So this angle, you're pretty much looking straight forward. Now, actually, what I forgot to mention is with these mounts, you need to remember the camera on the drift, the clip is detachable and it does rotate. If you just stick the mount on bolt upright, stick it in there like that, where are you looking? You think if you put it down, you're looking straight forward. But what you need to remember is your helmet sits like that. You need to line up the lens with the tilt of the top there. So that is where you'd be looking anywhere, that angle. So what you need to do is make sure you've got it tilted to the right angle, which I've found for this helmet in that position is four clicks anti-clockwise. 
Now there, it looks like it's looking straight up. But again, it's actually looking straight forward when you've got it on your head. Something else you need to remember is, if you've got a drift, if you've got a GoPro, this is more difficult because you need the the side mount which comes out and up and then you can rotate it there to get the rock to get it looking flat but i don't like the gopro because you have to have that massive mount cameras up here really easy to just come off if you crash or if you bump your head on something it can just go bing where's my camera gone this is i prefer the drift because it is tight up against your helmet and if you crash you're less likely to lose the camera one of the things i like about the drift is this if you see the lens the lens stays perfectly still it's something like 320 degree rotation so if you've got it on your on your helmet and it's like slightly to the side which is with most helmets if you haven't got it at the right angle you can just rotate the lens a little and there you go slightly rotated but it will look perfectly flat because if you look at the camera and think that's good enough and then go out and do a video it won't be good enough you need to stick it on there adjust everything get everything in the right place go out and test it come back review the footage and rinse repeat until you've got it perfect in all the setups i've done the camera's at the side of the helmet but that isn't the only way you can do it you've probably seen people we're mounted at the top there but again if you do that if you put the helmet flat stick it there you're going to be looking down the whole time because if you tilt it you're looking straight down at your front wheel useless camera you need it a bit further back at the top looking slightly down you you don't want to be looking dead ahead because if you're going to be motor vlogging most people prefer it if you can actually see part of the bike, like the mirrors or the dash or handlebars or something. If it just looks like a floating camera, it, in my opinion, I don't like the floating camera look. But it's all personal preference. If that's the way you want to do it, go ahead. No one's going to stop you. Why is that camera floating? Because it's on my head. Dick. So yeah, pretty much with the drift, you can mount it almost anywhere on your helmet at the top of the side down there looking backwards from the side wherever you want because again because it's got the rotatable lens you can have the camera is upside down but the lens is the right way up i much prefer this over the gopro but personal preference it's all up to you there is one thing I do like about the GoPro but you can't do with the drift and that's a mount on the front of your helmet because the drift mount is on the side of it it is damn near impossible to get it looking forward and if you do you've got that out the front of your helmet and that's just going to get in the way because it's square and the lens is right on the front piece of piss to mount it there you just need the right bracket you can get a normal mount stuck on the front and a bracket that's, I think it's a J bracket, comes up and a little there and it's got a hinge. So you can put the camera on and adjust it to where you want it. Now I do like that view because you don't have your helmet in the way. You've got all, like 130 degree wide angle lens view. And you can see quite a lot of the bike in front of you because it's quite low and facing forward. And you can see loads of the road, anything to the left, anything to the right, perfect. But with the drift, because most of the time it'd be on the side of the helmet, you've got part of your helmet in the way. It normally takes up about that much of the screen, maybe that much, depending where you put it. So yeah, I think that's covered everything. If I've missed anything, please let me know. But yeah, I hope that has helped. I hope you can make your own decision from that. I know... All three have been very similar with slight changes, but each one got better as I went on the Kberg. was very basic. I'm going to start motor vlogging. Let's put a camera here, put the mic here, done. Second one, a bit more thought out. And the third one was, right, I've tried it twice. So I know what's gone wrong. And actually, talking about going wrong, if you do put your mount in the wrong place and you've stuck it on by taking the tape off, putting it on, 
don't worry. If you get a hairdryer, you can heat up the mount. The adhesive will then soften. You can pull it off. You can't use that mount again, but it does mean you can get rid of that mount and it's not going to be sat there on the helmet not doing anything. So, something else I'll say is if anyone wants me to do a video on anything, anything at all, leave me a comment. Tell me what you'd like me to do. If I haven't done it, I'll try and get around to it. If I have done it, I'll point you in the direction of that video. Save me doing the same video over and over and over and over again. So, I've been talking for 20 minutes, and I'm not sure if any of this has actually worked because I'm using my phone on a very dodgy mount, resting on top of a box so it doesn't fall over again. I hope this has worked. So guys, cheers for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.